Hello, guys, Tyler is gone, and I have finally completed my dream of taking over the show. Today, we will be testing products from Amazon. Gary, what are you doing? Are you trying to take over my show? Listen, you peasant, you have been gone for too long. The people don't like you anymore. This is my show now. Really? So after everything I've done for you, this is how you're going to repay me by trying to steal my show? Everything you've done for me, question mark. Look at my chest. There's a giant hole. All you've done for me is try to kill me. Listen, Linda, whenever you signed the contract, you knew exactly what you were signing up for, and you knew that this stuff was probably going to happen. Listen, here, you Walmart version of Project Farm. I never signed a contract. I'm calling human resources. All right, well, if you're at least going to be calling human resources, at least make sure that you tell them this. he's taken care of. Let's get the video started. I don't know. I just feel like they're not as dull as as the sharpness sister showed. So. What? I mean, I expected it to cut in half, but I didn't think it was going to do it the same way that it did before. We went from 370 to 2000 on the sharpness tester. Let's do that again. I mean, that was a little sloppier, but I mean, it still sliced it clean in half. And then there we go. <laughs> You're paying $12 for this. I mean, it stays together, especially when you, you know, put the meat together. For whatever reason, let's just assume that you, for some reason, you like hamburger meat shaped like a hot dog on a hot dog bun rather than just actually eating a hot dog. So why would you not? Just take some meat, work it around like this. We all played with Play-Doh whenever we were kids. So just kind of bring back some old memories, you know, work it around. I mean, look at that. That right there. That's the exact same thing, and it's not $12. <laughs> What a great invention. I'm so glad they made this thing. It seems to have worked. At least a little bit. How am I supposed to get this out of here? Do you just like shove it down in there? Is this what you're supposed to do? You just shove it down in there. You crush your can and then now you have a, an open lid, right? So you can just... Oh wow. What an enjoyable experience. So glad I did this. Like what, like, what is this? What's the, what's the point of this thing? Did I do it wrong? Like open it beforehand? <laughs> no, this is worse. This is way worse. This is, this is a million times worse. But see, if you pop the top, you can stick your finger in here inside the little hole and pull this piece out. So now, instead of having a crushed can that leaked everywhere with the top still inside of it, now you have a crushed can that leaked everywhere that you were able to take the top out of. You see how much better that is? What a great invention. This is top notch, 10 out of 10. 
Hello, guys, Tyler is gone, and I have finally completed my dream of taking over the show. Today, we will be testing products from Amazon. Gary, what are you doing? Are you trying to take over my show? Listen, you peasant, you have been gone for too long. The people don't like you anymore. This is my show now. Really? So after everything I've done for you, this is how you're going to repay me by trying to steal my show? Everything you've done for me, question mark. Look at my chest. There's a giant hole. All you've done for me is try to kill me. Listen, Linda, whenever you signed the contract, you knew exactly what you were signing up for, and you knew that this stuff was probably going to happen. Listen, here, you Walmart version of Project Farm. I never signed a contract. I'm calling human resources. All right, well, if you're at least going to be calling human resources, at least make sure that you tell them this. he's taken care of let's get the video started this centerpiece comes out and uh, well first of all you put the centerpiece in you fill it with water around the outside and then these this outside is where the ice gets made and then pour the, you pull the center out break up the ice cubes and then dump the ice cubes in here and then put this back and then you do it again and then you keep this full of ice and then it's got a little lid that's supposed to keep everything secure and it's supposed to, I guess, save a lot of space or whatever. I don't know. It seems very, very stupid. Oh, uh, what is it? Oh. Oh. Why is it so chunky? It smells really, really, really bad. <coughs> Oddly enough, it, even though it smells like really, really, really bad, it doesn't smell like as horrible as you would think. I got our line tied to this pole. We got our phone. I'm going to set our phone to record. So we're just going to close that up in there. Now we want you to lay flat. And rock back and forth here. So now we're just going to... Hopefully that sinks. Oh, there it goes. Oh, there she goes. All right, we'll come back in 29 and a half minutes. All right, it's been about 29 minutes. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at that. I can still see the... Wow, check that out. It still works. Everything looks fine. Seems to be functioning. All right, I guess we'll move right along. What is in the middle? I don't even want to eat that. Oh, I bet I know what this is. Oh. <coughs> it's raisins, ew. It's not even like they just put raisins inside of it. It's like a, it's like a raisin mush or something. Gummy donut with rainbow sprinkles. Can you even eat this? Like, is this made to be eaten? Uh, I don't know if this is made to be eaten. Uh, this is so gummy. Ugh. 
I don't see how you could ever just take a bite of that thing. It's so, so tough. Yeah. It's so, it's just weird. Oh, apparently they come in <laughs> three different flavors. Cherry, orange, and blue raspberry. So this is obviously the orange one. It tastes like it has an orange flavor, but it's like a, like orange rubber, I guess, almost. Because it's like so thick and so gummy. It's not like a, it's not like a gummy bear type of gummy. It's like a rubber type of gummy. It's so weird. There's three servings per container. A third of this is one serving. Just that little tiny piece that I had that was like maybe, I don't know, maybe like that big. I don't see how you could eat one tenth of this in a, in a sitting. Piece of safety equipment that we're gonna be testing is these. <laughs> They're kind of like safety glasses that just didn't know when to quit and they just kind of kept on going. And to me, it's obviously it's supposed to be like a face shield, but to me, it kind of looks like something that should be like tinted and that you should wear to like, a nightclub or maybe if you're gonna like get in like get onto a spaceship or something they just doesn't really like if I just saw this hanging up somewhere it doesn't really look like a piece of safety equipment it looks like a piece of like fashion or something they're ugly and they're really stupid like look at this like really who's good who's, who's really gonna be wearing this like if I want something like this if I want something to protect my face I'm just gonna wear a face shield I'm not gonna wear safety glasses that are like extended to a face shield that like hit me in the mouth and like these are just kind of like what are these things these things don't really make sense we have to dull the knives i'm actually i'm not usually i enjoy this part i'm not even going to enjoy this part because these knives are actually very very nice and uh, the thought of dragging them across this is just uh, i don't want to do it it's my job so i have to so we're going to go uh, I think 10 swipes on each one. Ugh. From what I can tell, little did you guys know this video is literally just an excuse for me to eat. <laughs> Man, this gets tougher the more that I eat. Testing that sheath maybe you want to go back to this one. The one, I think this was the first or second one that I just looked at. That is a, that is a secure click. Let's see. I just brag about it and brag about how secure it is and it still can fall out. I mean, it, it still comes out, but that, that takes quite a bit more. Pickle juice. Pickle juice ice cream. I don't know why anyone would ever want such a thing. Come on. This is gonna be the most disgusting thing ever. I don't even, I don't even wanna talk about them. They're so disgusting, I don't, even wanna, I don't even wanna talk about them. And we're gonna see how good this thing is at cutting metal. Or actually, we're gonna see how bad it is at cutting metal because I highly doubt that it's good. And it turns out that Black & Decker in 2020 made $14.5 billion in 2020. You're telling me a company that makes $14.5 billion in one year could not figure out how to take a cord on the top and then flip it to the bottom. I don't know of a single other handsaw that has a, a cord in a more obnoxious place than this. Every single other handsaw, the, the cord's usually here, it's here. Who's, whose bright idea was it to put this cord on top like it's some ponytail that sticks out that's just always gonna be in the way? This is like the most obnoxious spot. You could have stuck this thing sticking right out of the side and it would have been a better option than putting it on top. I don't know who came up with that, but that was a horrible decision. Okay, so maybe we have a little bit more protection than we thought. Yeah, that's what we need in the garage. I should have done this one last. Banana slicers, in my mind, serve virtually no purpose because I don't know if you guys have heard of these. These come in many different forms and sizes and all kinds of stuff. I don't offhand know uh, how to pronounce what they are. I think it's I think it's called a knife or something along those lines. But this is all you need to slice a banana. You don't need some fancy contraption 
and I don't think that these contraptions make slicing a banana any easier or any less time consuming. So they just, they don't serve a purpose, I don't feel. I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, it's dirty in here, okay? This is my garage microwave. I don't clean it, I don't care about it. It's dirty, okay? So don't be surprised. I also did read the instructions for this product and for the wattage of this microwave, we are supposed to, see it's dirty, told you, no surprise, dead fish. This is like a... This is like a meat cleaver or something. I don't know exactly... I don't know what you would do with this. Maybe, I mean... I can't imagine this would have any purpose in the wild. Like a cooking thing or something. This thing is massive. It's super heavy too. Wow. Not crazy sharp either. These last two knives are just not, not that sharp. Let's go over to the Mountain Dew. This one's not as tough as that one. So there's gotta be something, something about the hot sauce makes the meat tougher, I guess. I don't like that. It, <laughs> it tastes like, like you get like a beef flavor kind of, and then, you mix that with like, I don't even know how to describe it. Oh, like a really, like a, if you open a can of Mountain Dew and then you let it sit out for like six months, just, it tastes like expired Mountain Dew. Ooh, I heard something rip. It's 550 paracord, so it should be a thousand pounds, you know, doubled over like that. I really thought we would have got somewhere by now. I don't like that. I don't like the, the ripping that I'm hearing. Ooh. Something's happening up here. What is that? I don't know if that's paint peeling. I don't like how much this rope is stretching. It makes me feel like it's getting ready to snap. I don't like the mysterious noises I'm hearing out of here. So I went to Harbor Freight, picked myself up a new pair of toenail clippers, and after I got done using them for the first time, I got to thinking, you know, these things look pretty heavy duty, and I bet they could cut a lot more than just toenails. So in today's video, we're gonna see what these things can really cut. The Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Mmm, it tastes just like a, a morning in 1998. I give that Eight out of 10. You can see we're at two pounds here. I'm gonna go ahead and make a, just a wild guess before I pull this. I'm gonna say that this is gonna pull somewhere around 75 pounds. I think it's a pretty good guess. I'm gonna use this to get more leverage. Oh, we're already at 95 pounds. Scratch that guess. Two hundred thirty-three pounds already. <laughs> Guess I was way wrong. Oh, jeez. Oh, four hundred thirteen pounds. Jeez. I really thought this would have broke by now. There's something cracking, and I don't know what it is. I think it's the block. pounds. Something's doing something. 545 pounds. I think, I think the block is going to fail far before the, uh, far before the glue does. I severely underestimated this. Severely. Uh, 
Okay. So, on the crane scale, we got 545 pounds. I don't think anything actually broke other than the wood block. I guess the recoil maybe put this up enough that it just popped it off the rope in the ceiling. I think this is gonna be triggering for some people. Ugh. Let's do like 10 passes with each one. <laughs> that is, that is disgustingly dull now. A sharpening stone on here and then you can put an angle cube and it like magnet, magnetic, it, you can attach it to the side of the stone. I did not cut myself, but that was, I felt that. That was really close. Trongs, whatever that's supposed to be. And it's for unforkable food. And what it is, is like these weird claw-like things that you're supposed to put on your fingers. So whenever you're eating finger food, you can pick your food up with these instead of your fingers so that your fingers don't get dirty, I guess. I guess as humans, we've gotten so soft that we can't even get our fingers dirty anymore. Or maybe somebody thinks this is more efficient. I have no idea. It's made so that you can take this tray off whenever the food's done, but then whenever you put the tray down, you can't, it doesn't even sit like on a level surface. So like, it's just really weird. Our next product is a staple free stapler. It says right here, no staples needed. It says it has some type of tab interlocking voodoo science technology. And apparently it can staple free staple five sheets. So. Get all that out of here. Oh, I bet it has like, I bet that's where the little scrap pieces of paper go. So we have two sheets of paper here. We all know a regular stapler. Staples them just fine. Now, let's get two more sheets of paper. Let's see here. Really? Mm. You see that technically that works, but, okay, let's do that again. Okay, technically it's stapled together, technically, but it takes almost no effort to pull it apart. These are batteries. Tactical light system, produced a focus spot, fully waterproof. Oh, is this just like a glow stick or something? Oh, and there's like different caps that you screw on. I'm a little bit confused. It has like a, another tube, so I guess you could make it shorter if you wanted. And it has this tube that I guess you could make it so you just have the red tip or something. I'm, <laughs> I'm really confused. It has, it comes with this little strap, go like this and like hang it in a tree or something. I don't know, camping or something in like a really, really dark place. Hang this up by like your tent or something. So from a distance, you could see the little, little white light. These little pods, I guess you can just kind of do whatever you want with. So I guess you could rotate this and then just kind of have whatever you want. So you could have a red tip and a white body or something. I'm really confused. It comes with, or not comes with, but it looks like you can buy a whole variety of different colors. Control light emission during stealthy operations. I have no idea. It doesn't really say, I guess it doesn't have a specific use. This thing has a, a picture of like, it looks like somebody diving and it's waterproof. I guess maybe you could drop this underwater so you don't get lost in the water or something. I don't know what this tube does. So this tube is just like a little tiny thing. It's got a, a little sleeve that rolls over the light. I don't know. This thing kind of is very confusing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> whatever, any, whatever your stealthy light needs are, I'm sure this could d d fit your needs. Whatever it's for. It's serrated just like a saw, so it should do pretty all right. Actually, that sucks. <laughs> I would not be replacing your saw with this thing. Let's 
see how impressive or unimpressive this is. I forgot that these waffles are supposed to sit inside of their molds for 30 seconds, they say. Oh, that's hot. I don't think these are going to be done. That, that one still felt squishy. All right, it's probably been about 30 seconds. Let's see what we got. Okay, sort of resembles a waffle. Oh, it comes out of the mold nice. Okay, so <laughs> we clearly did not get enough batter into this one, but it's not, it stinks, but it's not unbearable. Look at that. What it like? Oh, <clears throat> whatever, whatever is in, whatever those chunks are, whenever you like break those open, it's like, it's like you're breaking open like a, like a, like a smell capsule or something and it just gets a hundred times worse what we got here i have no idea it's got a picture of a strawberry on it oh it's gonna be like a, like a taffy or something uh, i'm not gonna like that oh that is so hard it has a really good flavor i do not i hate that texture it's like a taffy but like super super hard and as soon as i kind of bit into it it my jaw felt like it was like gonna be like glued shut a key and a coin and a knife might not scratch it but a center block should. So let's run this. <laughs> this is gonna make so many people cringe, but I'm going to love this. I'm just gonna swipe it across, see what happens. Ooh, it looks rough. That looks very rough. How much of that just wipes away? Ooh. Ooh. Did it crack the screen? I think that cracked the screen all the way across. From that, from that one little swipe, we got some twiglets. What's a twiglet? A whole lot of crunch and a whole grain munch. All right. They look like pretzel pieces. What kind of flavor is that? It tastes like dirt. That's horrible. Tastes, it, it literally just tastes like a crunchy dirt. Okay. We got a... <laughs> oh. We got a feisty pets. Go ahead and try me. Squeeze back of head. Oh, it's like a... It's like face moves. I have absolutely no use for this whatsoever. I guess maybe we can like put this in a jar of gasoline or something. This is gonna be tough. Come on, find a groove. Find a groove. There we go. Come on. Calm down. Okay. Well, I mean, the cut is still kind of slanted. Honestly, I'd have to, I'd have to go back and like look at the exact times. I feel like that was a little bit faster, and that also seemed to be just a little bit easier. We'll see if they behave the same. So you can tell, wait a minute. They're actually not far off of each other, honestly. Wow. Okay, I think we're. St I think I'm starting to see a difference. This one seems to be spreading less. And this, okay, that one went out. And this one looks like it's just gonna. You know, it'll just burn pretty much the whole shirt for as long as I let it burn. Okay, so there was a difference. And now we got more smoke. It, <laughs> it leans all the way this far. And then you can see, you could probably park a semi-truck in between these two planks. So these are just like... That is not a very good sign. I did not think that was going to break. I just wanted to tap it and see how strong it was. So that, <laughs> that is not, not a good sign at all. Let's go ahead and stick our, our crooked ladder. Let's just see if we can step up one step. 
Oh, let's lean back, lean this thing back just a little bit. Oh. No. Oh, and that separated, that separated this one. Wow. Oh, let's see. This one right here seems like it kind of might be stuck a little bit. Wow, this one's actually kind of strong. What? <sighs> I say it's kind of strong and then it just falls right apart. So this stuff does not stick to wood very good. So after that massive letdown, that kind of really lowers my expectations. How are you supposed to separate those bones with these things? Because like, mm, let's see here, maybe we can, oh? Oh, I got it. But see, that was way harder than it had to be. Be like melted in the bottom of the jar or something. Ew. What is that? So the cheese was sitting like this in the jar. So all this stuff at the bottom, it's like hanging off of it. Is this like fat or something? That's just like been condensed down to the bottom? doesn't smell like cheese anymore. We're gonna start off with this. This is, <laughs> this is a PD-100 gas mask. Useful applications. Fire escape, disaster relief, uh, environmental technology, pesticide, chemical laboratory, paint, chemicals, polish, petroleum, mining. Protects against organic gases and vapors, chlorine, benzene, acetone, alcohols, methyl bromide, brethyl chloride, chloropicrin, and many others. So it sounds like pretty much anything that can be inhaled, this thing can protect against. So, <laughs> here's our mask. It's got uh, two filters on each side. With a beard, this isn't gonna seal 100%. So, I don't know. If you're bearded like me, you're just screwed, I guess. And it's got these little straps right here, so you can tighten it down. Oh. Alright, I guess we're ready to come in contact with some, uh, I don't even know, end of the world chemicals or whatever. Or maybe we'll walk into a room full of paint fumes. Or something. I don't know. Alright, I'm going to see if I can go find a... Uh, uh, a pool of uh, methyl bromide or some chloropicrin. I want to see if I survive. Not much different, kind of just like everything else. Just little tiny itty bitty differences. Oh, oh, look at that. This one. That's completely dissolved. Are all of these like this? Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. You can break apart almost all of them. That's crazy. All right, so can a stool, can this stool hold 397 pounds? It absolutely can, and it's falling apart. I'm gonna let it go, and we'll see what happens. That was actually extremely satisfying. I heard something fall inside of the garage. Nothing important. Oh, look at that. Oh, it doesn't look like it's too, too chunky either. Let me give this a taste. It's good. I mean, not that the blender would change the taste. I just realized that on this gas one, it says no prime, no choke. So I guess it's just like automatic. What? It acts like there's something like, like stopping. <laughs> oh, 
and <laughs> you can't you can't make this stuff up. So here is what's going on. You can see that right here, these are the poles for the handle. For some reason, I don't know why, but those poles extend down into the deck. So that's kind of weird. So that means our handle, the handle that I was complaining about being uh, too short is actually probably long enough. So now for our knife that we sharpened on our $1,000 knife sharpener. Oh no. Oh no. Seven hundred and eighty. Yikes. Five fifty-five. Seven hundred and eighty. Four dollars. A thousand dollars. Ooh. All right. Where do we go from here? <laughs> All right. Let's give this one. Okay. This one right here, that is Coke 100%. No way. Did I really just get that wrong? What? Why, why, whenever I can see it, why does this one taste better whenever I can see it? Oh, man, I, I, I should have kept my mouth shut. It's plugged in. <laughs> it works. You can, we're, we're passing the electricity through hot dogs. It's pulling 9.5 watts, 0.07 amps. It's a, I think it's an LED bulb, should be. I honestly didn't think that was gonna work. I mean, I, like, I, I thought it might work, but like deep in my soul, I figured, I was like, eh, I don't know if this is gonna work. All right. Oh, it held me for a second. Oh, I'm 185 pounds, by the way. So that's how much force is gonna be on this thing. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty close. Next, let's go ahead and try to open a can of tuna. See how well this can opener works. Looks like... What? Am I really this stupid? Th this part right here looks like it's sharp. Like it should be the part that pierces into a, to a can, right? Oh, oh I, think I, might got, I, think I, I think I might have got somewhere. Maybe you gotta go at this angle. Either I'm stupid or this just really doesn't work. I feel like this is just not, not working right. See, I pierced the can. Enough of a lip on this can or something? Mallow cup. This is a whipped cream. This is, it looks like a knockoff version of a Reese cup, if I'm being honest. It just looks like a Reese cup with a whipped cream center. I didn't even know these existed until I went to the gas station to get stuff for this video. Yeah, this looks just like a, just like a cheap knockoff Reese cup. That's just weird. If I had never had a Reese cup before, it probably wouldn't be that bad. But whenever you hold something like this and you bite into it, you expect peanut butter. Anyways, before I got distracted by what I believe was a crackhead screaming outside, whenever you have something like this and you bite into it expecting peanut butter and you get marshmallow, it just kind of like takes away the magic and it's just not the same. Say you wanted some minced garlic. That's a lot of fun. And there you go. There's your, your minced garlic and carrot pieces. For one, it can, it can hold up to 397 pounds, but if you choose to go over that weight limit, this is what will happen to your stool. This thing is literally the top and bottom with a spring left and every single other piece just completely exploded. As long as you stay under the weight limit, I think it's actually a pretty good stool. But as soon as you go over that weight limit, 
you're done. If you have, if you're gonna get a slap chop, it, it'll work with these type of onions, but not these type of onions. I don't know what the difference is because I don't eat onions. That is crazy. Hot dogs are so conductive. I'm trying to think what else, what else we can do. The, all the, like the fan, I thought maybe the light might work. The fan, I thought there was no way that the fan was gonna work. The only saving grace that this bat might have is where I kind of like smashed it over the edges. It's just kind of, okay. Yeah, that's pretty much what I expected. Which that kind of sucks. Cause I wanted to, I wanted to see how like how many cinder blocks I could smash with this thing before it like before it would break. That wouldn't have even been like anything. That that was literally just like a, and then it broke. <sighs> this stuff's not very good on wood. And from what I can't really see a whole lot in there, but from what I can see, it looks like maybe we're gonna have some good grilled cheeses. Oh. How come as soon as it popped there was smoke? Okay. So this is the one without butter. It kind of just looks like two toasted pieces of bread, to be honest. Click this button and then like move it in whatever direction you want. It'll it'll automatically do tricks. So like you don't have to even be like skilled or anything to do tricks. Let's see if I can see if I can show you that. I'm not that good. I'm not that good of a drone flyer. Just so you know. See? Oh man, I lost it. So you can do that. You can do, let's do a back flip or a front flip. Front flip. Oh, oh no. And then stuff like that happens. Oh wow. The fabric is ripping apart before there's an actual flame. That's crazy. Like it's burning a hole, but it's not like an active flame. So that only took like three minutes. So it's like, it's it like, it's burning, but it's like not like an active, it's not like an active fire. It's just like slowly, it just like slowly heated it up until it just started like smoldering. Go ahead, finish it off. Mm. It has a weird taste to it. I don't know how to describe it. It did, it literally, the only way that I can mentally describe it is it tastes old. It's almost like we took the hot dog and put it in this old time machine and it picked up some old flavor and then now it's in the hot dog. Definitely not very good. Would not recommend. Yeah, that's bad. This is gonna be nasty. <coughs> oh man, that's a strong smell. Oh yeah, look at all that. Look how good that is. Let's go ahead and start it up. Please don't work. Please don't work. Please don't work. You can fail. It's okay. Oh, oh, maybe it's not gonna work. Oh, it's working. Come on. <sighs> well, I guess we're gonna have some pickle ice cubes right here in no time. Great. So excited. Look at those nasty things just falling off of there. They're like boogers. They're probably gonna taste like it too. There you go. Dump them over there. Ugh. They're not even like frozen. Oh, they just like fall apart in your hand. That's convenient. Let me get the scooper. Scoop one up. <sighs> I'm doing this for you. That's, <clears throat> that's worse than eating a pickle. I would rather eat the pickle than taste the pickle juice ice cube. <laughs> These things suck. There's, you literally, you can't even get a grip because whenever you grip it, it just like slides off. So <laughs> this is horrible. Oh, I wonder if maybe I can like, hammered in there maybe no what if you were to like hold on to like a branch or something 
Does that work? No. That's even worse. These thing, the, these, this design is horrible because what happens is whenever you can actually get these hooks to dig into something, these, it makes the pressure go this way, which, take, which takes this little ring, and then it just cranks it back against the, the bones of your hand, and it just ends up being extremely painful. You can, if you have something like this, like a little nub, you can kind of like, kind of slide your hand back and put it like over like this, and then like, maybe if you were to like do it in two different spots, then maybe you could like lift yourself up a little bit easier. Like, I don't even know if it, I don't even know if I'd say easier. You can just, you can lift yourself up, but you could do the same thing with your hands. As far as I'm concerned, these things give you absolutely no advantage. And if anything, they're just gonna like put you in pain pretty much. That's, <laughs> that's stuck on there pretty good. There's no residue or anything. I would imagine that'll hold something for quite a long time. I mean, okay, now it comes off. <coughs> There's, no, I can't do this. There's something about those chunks, whenever those things like break open or whatever it is, that just unleashes such a strong smell, it's almost unbearable. When, it's just, when it was just by itself, <coughs> it, was, it was like bad, but not horrible. This is horrible. I gotta get this out of here. Yeah, it's just, it is just getting shattered. Just completely shredded. Let's go again. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we, we, are, we, are, we are losing chunks now. This is like, I mean, this is kind of, kind of pathetic, the amount of chunks that we're losing. Next we got flake. I would assume that means it's gonna be something flaky. Oh yeah. Wow, why would you want that? That's literally just, this is like a, one of those like um, Nature Valley uh, granola bars. When you open the pack, it just like dumps out a hundred gallons of dust. That's what this feels like. There's already like crumbs everywhere. All this does is make crumbs. And it's just chocolate. Just make the chocolate without the crumbs. Just make it a regular chocolate bar. The chocolate's good, but not whenever it's crumbly and falling all over the place. I don't like that at all. That's horrible. That's a horrible idea. Why would you do that? I have no idea what this thing is. Oddballs blobfish. I have absolutely no idea what a blobfish is. I guess I'm like way out of the loop. This and here. Oh, all right, we're getting hot. You know, I bet that uh, Pop-Tarts probably weren't even invented whenever this toaster was first invented. We're putting uh, new age stuff into an old age toaster. I don't know what kind of metal this is, but I suspect that this is like melted down pop cans, because if you think about it, this thing is meant to just roll around its entire life, so they're obviously not gonna use a very high quality metal for that. This metal, I th it's just so soft and so such garbage. I think it's gonna be extremely hard to get a good edge on it, but we're gonna try. We're at 2,000 grams. <laughs> That's, that's not at all what I expected. I expected to be somewhere around like a thousand because a thousand is pretty much right around the edge of where you have like a severely dull edge and that's kind of where I expected us to be. But instead, technically 2000 is a common butter knife. And so we were above that with 2200. So sharpening it with a work sharp all we've done is bring ourselves down to the sharpness of a common butter knife. So I guess we have a lot longer way to go than what I thought. <sighs> All right, <laughs> get ready for the disappointment. Here we go. Three, two, one. completely disappointing. Some water came out. All right, so I know that I said it was gonna be about 12 hours that we were gonna let the shirts kind of, the stains kind of soak into the shirts. And in my typical fashion, it's been probably about 30 hours or so. So we're just gonna go with 30 hours. The sweet tea smell is kind of very, very, very faint. Again, there's this like weird, like slipperiness. Maybe it wasn't just the pickle juice. I don't know if maybe it's just been so long since I've had ramen noodles that like this is just something I wasn't aware of, but 
There's definitely like a, a slimy slipperiness there. You know what? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's actually pretty good. It has just a, it's not an overpowering sweet tea flavor. It's just a hint of sweet tea. I think, I think this one is the real one. This one has kind of a little bit of like a tinge of a diet taste. And then this one kind of feels like, or tastes like it has just a little bit more of a, like a more of a pronounced flavor. So this thing, for all the abuse it's been through, is actually maintained an edge pretty well. What I want to test next is can it handle a ninja attack from a ninja sword? stab it completely through the ball and see if that does anything. <laughs> Look at that. I know it's gonna destroy the sword, but it has to be done. I think that lid was tight too. All right, the lid's tight. did not see that coming. That actually, that genuinely scared me. Pretty much what I thought was gonna happen is exactly what happened. As soon as the carbonation builds up, it just blows the top off of it. All right, three, two, one. Thirteen seconds. The Black & Decker was like 13 and a half, right? Literally, with a hand saw, I can do just as good as an electric powered saw. That's pathetic. So, let's test the durability through, through that lid right there. I think the old cold steel war hammer with the giant spike, I think it's up for the task. Let's see if we can... Oh, that's gonna go right through. That is gonna... Maybe not. I feel like it's gonna go right through. Mm. Okay. Let's see. Oh yeah. Man, that kinda sucks. I expected it to be more more res impact resistant than that. Let's try just the instead of the spike, let's just try just the hammer side. Oh. Oh man, it broke that too. That wasn't even really swinging all that hard. Oh no, it didn't get through. It just kind of cracked the outside. So it seems like as long as, as long as it's not like getting hit with a giant spike or getting maybe dropped from a from a really high up place onto a spike or something. I mean, I have no reason to believe that the stuff wouldn't be wouldn't be protected. Let's see. If that's the main blade, or if there's an extra blade. I feel I feel like some type of caveman. Oh, you just gotta pull it. Okay. Okay, so that blade on the back is an extra blade. That's nice. That's like two blades. Okay, what are we doing here? What is going on here? I am missing something. That doesn't even make sense. Either this is a bad design or I'm stupid. So, that has to go there. And this has to go here to hold the blade, but there's no way to tighten the blade unless you spin, unless you turn, unless you turn this thing. But you can't turn it if the blade's on it. Wait a minute. I think I am stupid. Because the blade has to go, I am stupid. So you put this in here, and then, you, oh, okay. That makes a lot more sense. That's a good design. Now let's go over to medication. So we got acetaminophen, or also known as Tylenol, Loperamid, Loperamid HCI. Controls the symptoms of diarrhea. Oh, 
Okay. Dimetrophibrohymen. Antihistamine, ibuprofen, aspirin. Those are all nice to have. Wound care slash burn slash blister. I also could have used this in the past. A guide to wilderness medicine. Tells you how to like take care of different stuff. Oh, is this, this is supposed to be like a, like a mouthwash or something? Oh, it's got little, these little tiny packets. Oh, I did this all wrong. Pour the powder in your mouth. Yeah, it like foams up. It's minty, but it's like foamy. I feel like I got rabies or something. I gotta spit this out. Yeah, I don't know about that. This is how you would crack a regular egg. <clears throat> Normally you would just get something to crack it with. Crack it in there. And then you just Take your shell out. That's how you'd normally crack an egg. It's not, didn't take long at all. That in my last video, a lot of people in the comments said that I was just a complete moron. I had no idea what I was doing. There was, I wasn't using this thing right. I was doing everything wrong. And that I would just had, basically I had no idea what was going on because I, because I didn't get the knife as sharp as they expected. So I guess doing this, I guess that proves that you're wrong. And I didn't know what I was doing. These are kind of like, soft and like kind of floppy. These are way, way more crunchy. You can really tell a difference. I don't want to be too uh, controversial or anything, but after trying these, after not having them for so long, dino chicken nuggets actually kind of suck. Whenever I, whenever I just tried this, this is like the most bland, like just the low quality chicken nugget I think I've ever had. I kind of didn't expect that. Now, the amount of charcoal, you're just gonna dump it in there until you feel like you have enough. Mm, I could probably use some more. That feels like enough to me. Next step, you're gonna need lighter fluid. Now, always remember that your charcoal is very dirty, so you really need to give them a really, really good bath to make sure that they're very nice and clean. So we want to take our lighter fluid and we want to give them a really nice bath because remember they are extremely dirty. And we'll light them and then as they burn, sometimes you got to add a little bit more so you, because they're still, you know, they stay a little bit dirty so you got to add more. In about 10, 15 minutes, we'll have some nice charcoal. This thing called an angry mama. It's this little device and you fill it full of vinegar and water and then you put it inside the microwave and it steams up out of the top and then i guess the vinegar water steam mixture is supposed to like loosen up everything inside the microwave and make it to where you can just take a, a paper towel and just wipe everything right off we'll see if that's the case Let's see what the directions say <laughs> twisting counter clock whisk not wise w-i-s-s -S, to remove the angry mama's hair Pour vinegar, water to markings, blah, blah, blah. Microwave for five to eight minutes on high setting. Then about two minutes, the steam will blast out. If the, <laughs> if the steam not too much, you can microwave more minutes, but don't too long or angry mama may burned. I think we get it. Jumbo rainbow eraser, fruit scented eraser. Oh, this this really does smell like fruit. It smells like a like a Starburst. It doesn't taste like a Starburst. If you get this, just sniff it. Don't lick it. It smells way better than it tastes. What if I kind of like slam down? Oh, oh! That time it did it. Oh, I got an egg on me. I don't know, I don't know what was different that time, other than it was like the 50th time that I had done it. Oh, it's soaking through my shorts, and now my leg is cold. I don't know, I completely lost my train of thought. This just feels so weird. I can smell like the creamy ice cream flavor with the pickle smell mixed into it. And it's a very, very disgusting smell. I don't want, I don't want to try this. Let's, uh, Bone apple teeth. Mm. 
Mm-mm. 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 That should be a crime. I should literally, after creating this, I should literally go down to the police station and turn myself in and just, like, accept a life sentence for committing such a horrible, heinous crime. Now let's see if we can hold this thing sturdy enough to get a good cut. Three, two, one. I don't know what else to do. Wait. Like, it just vibrates everything to pieces. How am I supposed to hold this thing still? I got some carrots here. Let's see if this thing works as, as advertised. Really? Oh, maybe you just gotta really hit it. Oh, I think I might see the appeal now. Come on. Oh. Yeah, let, let's just take it easy. Ew. I'm assuming that probably cracked whenever I put the egg in there. I guess as the For Loco did its thing, it like pushed out some of the, some of the yolk or something. Let's mess with this one first. So the yolk is like weird. Kind of like Play Doh y. Okay, looks like a normal potato. Now let's take this potato, no magic little bag or anything, and let's just put it in there for four minutes as well and see how that one turns out. Okay, well, there's something weird happening to it. It's like. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just moisture getting released. It sounds like a, like a snake hissing inside of there. Like it's really like angry. Maybe that bag is doing something. I think, I think something's wrong. <coughs> that does not smell as inviting as the first one. I don't know why that smells, it smells like burnt. This one, whenever I opened it, it smelled like I was being welcomed into like an Outback Steakhouse. This one sound, smelled like Outback Steakhouse was telling me to leave. There's a lot of pressure building up in here. Yeah, it might, it might not build up enough pressure to do it. I might give it a little squeeze, see how far away we are. Oh yeah, it's gonna, it would take a lot of pressure to blow the lid off. Ooh. I'm done with this. I'm gonna have to clean. There's gonna be ants everywhere in this garage. Huh? It's got a handle here. It's got two shoulder straps. Like it's got like these like wings on the... <laughs> this is literally leaving me with more questions than answers. Like is this what you do? You hide in it like, a, like some type of hobbit? And then like wrap these around like some type of burrito or something? Apparatus that's supposed to like maybe keep you dry or something? I have absolutely no idea whatsoever. It looks like maybe, I thought I, since it had straps on it, I was thinking that maybe it was like some type of contraption that you wear. Like if you have like a backpack on, you put this like over your backpack and then it keeps like you and your backpack dry or something. Like none of that makes sense. The parts on the bottom, they look like they're supposed to like wrap around your legs, but they're like this big. No idea what you're supposed to do with this at all. There was not a single piece of instruction. C-A-L-I-L-O-H-A. Maybe somebody has one of these and they can describe this. Oh, these clips go to these? That makes even less sense. Either this thing is very complicated or I am just like really, really stupid. I think I'm just gonna get the pickle right out of the way. Super dry. Again, another thing that had high salt, high salt content. Very dry. Ugh. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That is no good. It makes it even worse because where the jerky is dry, you put it in your mouth 
you start chewing on it, and then where it's so dry, it's got to, you know, it's got to get some moisture. It's got to soften up a little bit. And then once it starts softening up, it like, like it, does, it doesn't taste like anything until it's softened up. And then as soon as it starts getting softened up, it's like it just like releases this like huge rush of just like concentrated, nasty, pickle, vinegar flavor that just, I mean, punches you right in the tongue. A concentration of like 10 million pickles condensed down to a, like a, a super concentrated like syrup or something. It's too much. That's absolutely disgusting. Now I think the only hope that I have is going to be something like this. You know, I, d I don't know if I actually have a chance at this. This is literally, I'm 185 pounds. This is all I got. Maybe I can bounce on it like a poke stick. I don't think. Come on. Let me see if I have anything to extend these handles with. Yeah, I, I don't have anything to extend those handles with. I don't have any pipes or anything. I think I'm just gonna have to accept defeat on that. <laughs> Two out of 10. It almost leaves like a, like a weird feeling on your tongue. <coughs> it's like the gift that keeps on giving. Two out of ten. That's a one. Let's see what this is. If that's a one, that's like a half. But just like I don't know, it just makes me makes me feel weird on the inside. Basically, what you could do with this thing is you could hit somebody with it or you could stab somebody with it, and then I'll show you what's on the inside. So if you're being attacked, so you can just... That's quite a bit louder than I anticipated. So, get them out of the way. So that way you can't open the door. One good shove and we should be through. Oh, the door appears to be locked. The, the device itself actually didn't break. Oh, the door frame cracked. I guess where the door frame cracked, it'll give it enough wiggle room to kind of get out of there. This is supposed to be a fireball shooter is what it's advertised as. And all it is, is it's just like two pieces of, of metal tube with two buttons, nine volt battery. And then there's two uh, little tiny coils in the back that glow that glow red hot what the ad said on wish was that you were supposed to take a piece of toilet paper wad it up into a ball and push it down there and then once it's against the coil in the back you're supposed to be able to just push the button and then it's supposed to shoot out oh imagine that i can't believe it my fireball shooter is not shooting fireballs it's just lighting the toilet paper on fire who would have guessed as you'd guess it does not work it just burns the toilet paper. So I don't know who tested this or who came up with this, but this thing was complete garbage. So it tastes like trash? Yeah, it tastes like <laughs> trash. It tastes like a carrot that you pulled out of a dumpster. That's what it tastes like. Oh, wow. I don't want this Babies like, oh, babies like um, carrots, not trash. No wonder babies cry all the time. If they're eating those type of carrots. So if you're feeding your baby carrots and they cry, it's because it tastes like trash. I wouldn't, For all I wouldn't, you parents out there. I wouldn't feed a baby that. Okay. This I wouldn't feed that to a dog. I just don't have much flavor. Peter Pan and Skippy kind of taste the same. Great value. I would say Jip is the best. Great value. Bottom of the barrel. <laughs> and Skippy and Peter, Peter Pan, pretty close. But Jif, Jif is definitely on top. So... I guess now it's Jif versus Jif. They are really, really compensating for their lack of flavor. I mean, the top, like the tops, you know, they look pretty much the same. Well, actually, the thicknesses don't actually look all that different, but whenever you hold them in your hand, you can tell that this one's way thicker. So they're, they are definitely 100% compensating for their complete lack of flavor by just shoving more filling in. This thing is already under pressure, so I'm gonna try to do this fast. I'm gonna try to just stab it and then just let it have it. Oh. Three, two, one. Okay. Maybe not. Have no fear. I have a backup. And also, let's do this. 
Let's put a cinder block right here. So that way I can stab into it without it rolling away. Three, two, one. I think that went just about as expected. It's all over the door and everything. I didn't realize it shot that far. Let's go. We only got one shot. All right. <laughs> that was pathetic. It just, it really didn't do a whole lot to the blade, but it did, didn't cut anything. Literally not even like, not even a little leak. Man, that was, that was way worse than I thought it was gonna be. Let's try again. I peeled the label off of it. Still nothing. Not even a pinhole. Nothing. Let's just say you're in a war with a crossbow. You have that shield. Let's see what happens. <laughs> um. Yeah, don't use this shield if you're gonna get shot by a crossbow. It's just not a good idea. Very, very bad things. <laughs> there you go. Just one swift move. They don't even know what hit them. Now, I'm gonna show you guys one more. This one is a super basic move. Really, anybody can do it. So, this is a move that you would use, like, if, say someone's like, they're standing right next to you, but like, they're just getting a little bit too close to you, and you have this, you just kinda wanna hold it, just kinda hold it like this, you know, just kinda like a, kinda like a baseball bat. Make sure the blade is orient, orientated the right way. Just stand here, say their hands are getting too close to you, be like, hey, hey, back up! And they're taken care of. Or not play, where this ruler is so thin, I feel like it should slice really easily. So we're gonna see if we can cut four of them. All right, try to see if we can hit right in the middle. Okay. I mean, we cut the tops off of all four. I can sit here with a 10 pound sledgehammer and just pound on my foot and nothing's gonna happen. That's impressive. You can see it's even damaging the fabric on the shoe, which kind of proves that it's not indestructible, but so far, I mean, that'll, that'll save your foot. Like a snowman type of thing here. All right, here we go. Slam chop, making salad. <laughs> that literally, that worked so perfect. And most of it even stayed on the table. Actually, we'll use this, kind of move it all back in place. Okay, gets a little stuck sometimes. Look at that, that's legitimately chopped up lettuce. That's just like, it's just like a salad. No. Shouldn't have known that was gonna happen. Well, we're already here, might as well send it. I should have pretended like that didn't happen, okay. I mean, that looks pretty carbonated to me. Let's see if it pours any different. It's a little more bubbly. It pours out like it's chunky or something. That's odd. That's not something that I anticipated. That's so bad. Well, I might have some life left in it. Oh. I think we're pretty much 
just dead in the water. Oh. Come on. Oh, it's working. Okay, <laughs> that's uh, that was surprising. Um, I guess it takes uh, <laughs> significantly less force to roll a vehicle that is in neutral than what I thought. I figured that would have snapped in, you know, snapped instantly because it only took like what a hundred something pounds of force to uh, snap it. Can't wait to see how many misses I get with this one. Definitely hit that time, but it didn't do anything. I think we're gonna be able to cut right through this bar easy because it just doesn't seem like, I mean, I can kind of bend it just like that. I really don't think that's made of anything substantial. Let's cut the wire first. I feel like that's gonna be pretty easy. <laughs> that was literally just like, I mean, this much force. That was, that was all that took. That was basically, that was basically nothing. That cable must be made of very, very soft steel. Now this next one, I really don't know what to think about this one. This is the E8000. This one is, this one said it was a medium viscosity, all purpose glue. I honestly have no idea. It's either gonna be great. It's, I think it's either gonna be uh, really good or really bad. Wow, that's an amazing glue right there. That's totally dry too. I was thinking maybe it wasn't gonna be dry. All purpose glue, huh? Five pounds, all purpose, five pounds. What are you gonna glue with five pounds of force? This is still like, like almost tacky, even though it's not like wet at all. Don't buy E8000 that's like, four cents on Amazon. Don't buy it, it's not a good idea. So let's go ahead and get our lamp ready. Nothing crazy happening. And that actually kind of looks a little bit brighter than before. So these these pickles might, that's 0.07 amps. These pickles might be more conductive than the hot dogs. So let's go ahead and go to the fan. We're gonna start off on high. Here we go. Oh yeah, these pick, these these things are way more conductive than the than the hot dogs. I think it'll probably reach full speed. 0 0.40, mm, not quite full speed. Let's see, will it need time to charge up like it did with the hot dogs? I'm gonna go on high pulse. All right. No no charge up time required. It just works right off the bat. It, it said it was pulling roughly like the same amount of amps, I think, maybe just a tiny bit more, 1.1 and some change, but there was no charge up time and it was just, it's just right there. So these are wildly more conductive, which is probably another example of why you shouldn't eat them and they probably shouldn't be made for human consumption. <sighs> now let, I'm almost kind of, for some reason, I'm almost kind of nervous to light it just because it was soaked in gas. Is anything gonna happen? Really? It's maintained, I think it's maintained its uh, fire resistance. Yeah, look at that. Let me get the original one. This is the shirt that we cut that off of. Yeah, here's the sleeve that we cut this off of. Let's light this. I can see it's starting to get kind of dark. As soon as you pull the flame away, it just goes out. Ow, this thing's getting hot. Mm. Actually, you know what? Forget the lighter. Let's just move straight on to the blowtorch. I don't need a lighter. So, here's the original one. Not, wa not washed, not soaked in gas, nothing. Okay. Flame hell. After I pulled the blowtorch away, the flame stayed there for, what, one second maybe?
That is the exact same performance. That is absolutely crazy. These are like, these are spikes that you're supposed to put on the bottom of your shoes. They don't even have like a, they just have like strings that you tie them just like regular shoe strings. I don't, it's supposed to make you run faster or something, or maybe that's the idea, give you a better grip maybe. Don't really see. <laughs> I, I don't think these are gonna work. I have like a little a little thing set up over here so we can see how fast I can run with and without these things. So I'm gonna put these on and then we'll see what happens. So this next part, I'm actually gonna do this without the spikes first. So I have tape up on the fence. Each one of these, each one of the pieces of tape is one foot apart from each other and there's 11 of them. And we are filming at 60 frames per second. So if I run in front of these lines, with some complex math, we can figure out roughly how fast I'm running. So we're gonna do that without the spikes and then with the spikes and we'll see, see if I get any faster. That was probably a world record. Let's go the other way. And then I'll, I'll do one running like this because we all know that makes you go faster. Now, <laughs> that last one was so fast. I bet you didn't even see that on camera. All right, I got the spikes on and I gotta tell you, I feel pretty fast. <laughs> well, <laughs> literally three steps in and that one fell off. This one is just sliding right off. I feel like that is gonna be a recurring theme, but I had one really tight. I'll put them on even tighter and we'll see what happens. So I have these things so tight now that I, the circulation to my toes is being cut off. So if they fall off this time, then I guess I'm just too fast for these things. I don't, I don't know what that speed was, but before I even got to the end, both of them had already came off. So, you're not running very far, very far or very fast in these. So, these things suck as well. So let's take a look at this confetti high five. I think, I think this is pretty straightforward. Well, it's like just some device that you high five somebody in and then you get a little burst of confetti. Celebration more spectacular, I guess. So I guess you just put this in here and then you would put your hand in here. And then since I don't have anybody here, I guess I'll just high five myself. You just. Here, let me, let me give you guys a celebration. Wow, let me give you a better celebration. Now somebody needs to uh, come and clean all this stuff up.